This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video we're going to take the saving system that we created in our last video, and while that's useful for, particularly for like iterating on our saving system, um, using player prefs isn't really ideal for saving our game. However, it is useful for saving things like settings that a player might want for things like their audio or maybe character customization. Things that aren't going to impact the actual play of your game or the progress of your game, but things that the player just may want um, to be able to tool around with a little. And so what we're going to do is we're going to continue using player prefs right now by creating a player, sort of a game settings menu, where you can control the volume of music and sound effects in your game. Right now we don't have those in our game, but we can even implement those um, and at least create this system where we could control that and save that um, status of what we want our volumes to be. So. Let's jump right in with this, and today we're going to set up our scene for our menu, and then from there we'll get into the code of how it actually affects the game. So first thing we're going to do is in our main menu scene, we need to create a new button to get to our settings menu. So we can do that pretty simply by simply duplicating our level select button. We're going to go to right click and go duplicate, or you can do uh, control D on Windows, command D on Mac, I believe. And I'm going to rename this to settings button. And I'm going to change the text on it to simply settings. And I'm going to move this whole button, make sure you're on the button itself, from negative 45 to negative 90. Now, if we had a lot of dynamic buttons here, I would start to recommend here using um, either a grid layout or a vertical layout to space these out evenly. For right now, though, we know the number that we're going to have here. It's just as quick to be able to kind of do the math and go where we've got 0, 45, 90. Just kind of process it that way. So we've got the button there. We do want to make sure we're not going to our level select menu. So I'm actually going to switch this from main menu UI level select button to no function right now. So right now, if we click our settings button, nothing will actually happen. We're going to save that. And what we need to do is we need to have some sort of a function to tell the main menu to send us to the settings menu, which doesn't exist right now. So we need to go to scripts, and we need to go into our main menu scripts to our main menu UI. We'll open that up in MonoDevelop. I'll zoom in a little bit here so you can see a bit easier. And we have our start button and level select button functions, and this is going to work just the same way. I'm actually going to copy this one right here paste it again, and instead of level select button pressed, we're going to say settings button pressed. Um, and again now, in order to do this, however, you'll also note that we don't have a um, enum reference for our scene name to be the settings menu. So we need to add that as well. So I'm going to quickly save this and jump back over to um, Unity, and I'm going to go back to our scripts and into my scene load manager which is where I am currently storing the enum for our scenes. So we've got menu main, level, level end, menu level select. I want to add another menu, and this menu will be for settings. So now we have an enum to reference this. So now I can change this in our main menu UI, so when the settings button is pressed, I want to load scene name dot menu settings. Now bear in mind, that our scene names here should always be reflecting our build order. So what we want to do is go back to Unity and go File, Build Settings, and make sure that we're adding in the um, settings menu to this. However, we haven't created that yet, so we need to do that. So what we'll do is we'll close out of this for one second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to our assets level where we have our scenes right now. I'm going to take our main menu, because this structure of menu actually works pretty well for us, and I'm going to duplicate it. I'll right click. We actually can't right click and duplicate here, but I can do control D, and that creates this main menu one for us. I'm going to rename that to settings menu, and now with this extra scene, we can go back to build settings and then drag that into our list, and now this list of scenes matches with our list of scene name enums. So I can close out of our build settings and we can finally go back to our settings button and now we can tell 
our onClick function. Instead of to do no function, we can tell it to go to main menu UI and get our settings button pressed. And that will now take us to the settings scene. However, we need to set up the settings scene itself. So let's jump into that. I'll quickly save the main menu. Now you'll notice that obviously settings menu doesn't change the appearance here because this is a direct copy of the main menu. However, you'll notice in your hierarchy it does tell you you've gone to the right scene. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the title of our scene here to settings. And that'll just give us a quick view and say, okay, I'm in the settings menu right now. Likewise, we're not going to need our start and our level select buttons here. So we can delete both of those. And our settings button, we're actually going to modify and then kind of split it into two buttons. So I'm going to call this a save button instead of a settings button now. And I'm going to give the text the name save. I'm going to do a little bit more tweaking here. In the save button, I'm going to change the width of it to about 80 instead of um, instead of the 160 that it was. And we're going to position it at about negative 90. Or sorry, negative, well, we'll do negative 60. That's a bit wide. Yeah, negative 60 will work well. So this is going to be the button that we click when we want to save the setting changes that we've made. Then I'm going to duplicate this entire button. And for our save button one, I'm going to change this to cancel button. I'm going to change the text to cancel. And cancel button, we're going to put at the position of positive 60. So that puts it to the right of the um, kind of middle of the screen. So now we have these two buttons that will, at the end of whatever we've done, we can decide do we want to save the changes we've made or just cancel out of them. And in either case, we're going to send ourselves back to the main menu. Now right now you'll notice that we don't have a function tied to either of these and that's because there wasn't a function tied to that settings menu when we first duplicated the scene. And that's fine because we don't want it to do anything from the main menu. In fact, what we can actually do is click, um, I'm going to click on both of these. Um, I'll use control click to select the save button and the cancel button. And I'm actually just going to completely get rid of this function here because right now it's tied to a main menu UI and we're going to get rid of that in one second. So I'm going to com completely get rid of them by hitting the minus button. And then we're going to go up to the main menu UI, the canvas, and I'm going to get rid of this entire component because this is not going to be a main menu. It's going to be our settings menu. We're going to create a whole set of scripts for this menu. Lastly, we need some settings to change. And like I was saying before, we can do some like, well, a common thing you'll see here is audio changes. So things like changing your background music volume or your sound effects volume. So we're going to create both of those. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on main menu and create an empty. Now when you create an empty in the UI, it actually creates a rect transform for you. So this is just a nice little placeholder on our canvas. This is actually not going to hold, we're not going to put anything on this specific object. So I'm just going to call this though, I'll call this um, music container. And it's going to be what contains the elements of our music settings. So I'm going to right click on the music container itself and I'm going to create three UI elements. I'm going to create a text, I'm going to create a slider, and I'm going to create another text. The first text is going to be the label, which is going to tell us in this case that it's controlling the music volume. So I'm going to um, click on that and quickly change its name to label. Slider will just keep named slider. And the last one's going to be a value. It's going to show that when you slide the slider, it changes from any, anywhere in a range from 0% to 100%. So this one I'm going to rename to uh, value. because It's kind of the value of the slider. The label and the value, we actually both want, right now you notice that it's kind of hovering above the line of the um, slider, and that's because the position of it is at the very top of its kind of bounding box. So I'm going to move that to the middle and that's going to kind of center on that slider. Now the label, I'm going to do a couple of other quick changes here. I'm going to change its position to negative 120 and its width to 80. So that's going to bring it to the side here. The value, I'm going to change to a position of positive 140 
and it's going to have a width of 80 as well, which brings it over to the right of the slider. For both of these, I'm going to control click to select them both at the same time. Otherwise, you can do this in your, I'm going to do this in the text component, and you can do it individually if you'd prefer. I'm going to change from normal font style to bold, and I'm going to change the color to white so it's a little bit easier to read on this green background. Now for the label, this is going to be for our music settings, so I'm going to change the label's text to music, and I'm going to change the value to, we'll just say 100% for now. Uh, we'll be changing this dynamically, but for now we get the idea that that's going to show us what percentage our volume's at. Now, the nice thing is, because we have all this kind of built in here, we can simply duplicate this, and we can create a second set of um, setting sliders for our sound effects. So I'm going to call this SFX container. And in here, our label now is going to be, we'll call it sound FX, and our value will stay the same at 100%. However, what we do want to do is move this down a little bit. and well, I'll put this down to about negative 35, pretty decent spacing there. So now we have what is a not a functional settings menu, but it has all of the elements we need that we can now put in some code and make it functional. In fact, we can see this if we save this here and go to main menu, we'll hit play, and we can now hit our settings button, go to our settings menu, we can adjust the sliders, Nothing obviously changes at the moment, and we can click our two buttons and nothing happens there. And that's what we're going to do in our next video, is see how we can A, make these values change when we change our sliders, and B, when we hit save, actually apply that to player prefs, or cancel out, ignore the changes we've made, but in either case for saving or canceling, going back to the main menu so we can continue and play our game. So that's setting up our settings menu. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.